Welcome to the Book Party Podcast. Join us as we journey into the world of books with Michael T. Prepare to be captivated by engaging interviews, insightful discussions, and fascinating stories. You'll discover new adventures and gain insight into the creative process of the authors themselves as they share their struggles and accomplishments. Now let's hear from Michael T. This is Michael T. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special episode of the Book Party Podcast, where we dive deep into lives and stories of remarkable individuals who inspire us through their transformation journey. Today, we have a guest whose life journey is extraordinary. He's a man who's worn many hats, from a football coach to a Marine Corps veteran of Desert Storm. But his remarkable transformation takes center stage in his new book, Broken and Redeemed. Please join us in welcoming John Jarman, a professional fitness coach and men's discipleship leader with an unwavering passion for seeing lives transformed by the grace of Jesus Christ. In Broken and Redeemed, John lays bare his life's journey from a troubled childhood to the challenges he faced as an adult. But it doesn't stop there. He shares his struggles, failures, losses, and blessings that have defined his path. Through counseling and mentorship, John embarked on a profound journey of self-discovery that ultimately led him to a complete surrender of his life to Jesus Christ. In his book, he invites readers to join him on this transformative journey exploring the strength the found in faith, the power of the Holy Spirit's presence. John Jarman's story is a testament to the fact that accepting Christ is just the beginning. As he reveals, faithful obedience often places us in situations we could never have imagined. But in these moments, we truly begin to live as we listen to God's voice and follow his path. Broken and Redeemed isn't just a book. It's a guide for deeper faith and self-reflection. It's a call to action, an invitation to walk the path of redemption and transformation with John as your guide. So, whether you're a personal journey of faith-seeking inspiration to overcome life's challenges, stay tuned because John Jarman's story is about to unfold here on the Book Party Podcast. So, John, welcome to the show. We're honored to have you here to share your incredible journey and wisdom that you gain. So why don't you take it from here, fill in the blanks a bit, and tell our listeners about yourself. That's it, Michael. And thanks for having me on the show. I've been looking forward to that conversation. So, um, no, it's, uh, it's quite the journey. It um, took a long time. Um, I grew up in a very violent home. My dad was an uh, alcoholic and very abusive. And for most of my life, I didn't think that I was uh, a victim of that. And it wasn't until I started working with my sister, back to the United States, that I kind of figured out that yes, I was a victim and, and I you know, had a lot of scars from that time in my life. And um, yeah, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Uh, and then the knowledge of Christ and the letters that I saw my grandmother from my sister John through that I was telling that that had something special coming for me. And then the book came out, I said she was smaller than that, and Heather was just doing that all the time. Um, and then uh, I was sad my dad left us. That was my two brothers and my mom who survived. And then I was 12 years old, and my dad had a very different age. You know, I got involved in uh, drugs and. I was in you know, high school and everything, and I continued by my path until one day I was like, you know, there's something more to life, and I joined the military. Because uh, I wanted to go get an education to teach, and I wanted to help kids not go down the same path that I was going down. Um, so in 1987, I went to the military office to sign back. Two months later, I was standing in San Diego, and uh, that's where I first went to prison. And so the bill stepped up in on Sunday morning and said, we could go to church. And it was an hour of food at the training and, and filming it. So I said, sign me up. So I put a vacation for the day for an hour. Um, and I think that's where the shoe was turning. 
Okay, well, what year did you join the Marine Corps? 37. Okay, because I joined the Army in 1981. Okay. And the Army retired me in 1996 uh, after two years of going to a bunch of Army hospitals, some civilian hospitals and whatnot. So now I'm 100% combat disabled with the VA. And, you know, they the take service. care of I'm sorry? I said, thank you for the service. And you for yours. So anyway, on your publishing journey, mm -hmm. did you go the self-publishing route or the find an agent agency route? Or did you take the path in between to like a hybrid publisher? How did you take your publishing, your route? Okay, because when I wrote my my first three books, I self-published by just uploading into KDP. That, you know, I didn't bother going any other path. I just did KDP, and I'm working on number four now. And all of them have to do with parenting in one way or another. Uh, two of them are just parenting teenagers. One of them is parenting styles, so it deals with all ages. And then uh, the one I'm working on right now 
this isn't the title, but this is the, the main gist of it, is basically whatever teenager needs to know before they leave home. So it's, uh, it's almost done. Yeah. So I haven't decided how I'm going to do that yet, but it's probably also going to be a KDP type situation. Have you thought about doing audio on your book? And then the other thing to put in is that once the book shows you the truth is not true, and then the book is distributed to the student who gets about the head and the other thing that's going to show that challenge. That's an advantage that I had in the public. Because I've showed, I haven't shown you a list of the other books I've shown so far, and I've showed two books from Fallon, two in Germany, and the Pepper in the United Kingdom. Okay, because I'm actually going to do audio on all of mine, but the way I'm set up is I'm going to go ahead and do the narration myself, and it's a lot more cost-effective to do that than to have to hire somebody to do the narration yeah. for you. And more than them, I just put it a bit. Also, it's tough to do the new that I did because I'm not just that sure. So, then I said I wanted to do it, and I told him that I just don't know. Yeah, well, the best one I've found, and I'm not getting paid to give a plug, but the best one I've found is Amplify Audio. And uh, they've got different plans for different ways to do it, and they've got different scales. I mean, you're not going to get Morgan Freeman to read the Bible. I mean, that must have cost a whole lot of money. But they have... They have uh, narrators that are just basically starting out that are very good at what they do, and they're very cost-effective as well. So it just depends on what what you want and how you want it to sound. But anyway, enough of that. So you had to get, uh, besides the editing, you had to do formatting and the cover design. So did you, you got that done through collaboration as well? Yes. Yeah, the, the, how we did the covers is I saw in the covers um, put out a really nice shop that should have to make posters and stuff like that. And so I kind of threw together a couple of cover ideas and I sent it to them. Um, so they have to do that. They call it an optimist. So it's an hour and a half phone call with the head of those publishers, the designer, the a couple of other people in the record that have a chosen. Um, and then, so the other stuff is that kind of pattern, and then those set me to four different designs, and I could select this and a lot of them and keep it there. And then, as far as the inside format is, they did all of that, because I approved it on all of it, so um, cause it's my book. Um, and then, there's the back cover design as well, and so it was all done by and through the publicist. So. Okay. Because, you know, if you're, if you're ever building multiple books, more than one, I found it necessary and easier to basically build a team. You know, you've got somebody that's going to do your editing, somebody that's going to do your formatting, somebody that's going to do your cover design. And I actually was able to build my team. Now, this is available through like Upwork, Fiverr, you know, some of those platforms. I was able to build my team completely out of Fiverr. And when you get the first book done that way, then you have a solid team that works well for you doing the second, the third, the fourth, man, it goes like clockwork. So when it's time for them to do their job, it is fast. They do a great job. And so if you decide to do multiple books, that's a, that's a thought you might want to take a look at is just kind of putting a team together. So take us to a point that you would consider in this in this book to be your worst author moment in writing this book? Uh, you know, that would have to be when I started to write about you know, the, the transgressions that I made in my life because it was tough to figure out how much to put in without opening the rooms of people that I had hurt. Um, because I knew that they had to really know that I did make mistakes and that I did hurt some people along the way. Um, because I didn't know how to read them as room for that food that they read the book. Um, and people that were kind of around that situation, if they read my book, they would understand that I'm talking about. Um, but, the, but the general readers not going to know names or that sort of thing. So that was something tough to, to do. And then I was very really good to my editors and um, through that a little bit more detail about my life and I should read that. And um, uh, so that was a little tough because I didn't know I put too much detail into that because I didn't want to. 
that has that type of thing. Right. Well, let's flip the coin a little bit and go to what I call an epiphany moment. And take us maybe to a point. Now, what I mean by this is not while you're actually writing. You're doing something else. You could be driving. You can be mm-hmm. coaching. You can be cooking. You can be doing anything else, taking a shower. And all of a sudden, the light bulb goes off in your head, and it's like an aha moment where, man, I got to find a pen and paper. I got to write this down right now so the <laughs> idea doesn't fade. Do you have an epiphany that, moment like that when you're writing a book? I, I do. And that's not the third turn of the book. Um, so do that. My other thing that I do, um, put another chapter in the book to turn chapter 13 and what the last chapter 13 and not this is not this is. Um, so that is a critical chapter to tie the book to close the book that is. So if you did an interview this week, and how I did that and so on, and you know, how I did coach somebody through that. And then the following morning, I was at work doing my, doing my program at that, and I was listening to some other music, and I'm just going on. And all of a sudden, I went, oh, I need, I need to get this done. And so I texted her, and I said, send it around that, I got no idea. And as soon as I was done with the program, I said, send me the I had the notes in my email, and I started writing, and that's the kind of culture of chapter. Okay. Well, let's go to today. Mm-hmm. What is the one thing that you're the most fired up about or most excited about right now, today? Uh, it's an event that we're planning next summer here in, in Washington State. It's going to be held at our state fair. It's going to be a two-day worship session there. Uh, it's been in parties and worship things and around the area, and we're going to invite the public to come in and, and we're going to mention the fiction artists to perform and the bringing in some keynote speakers. Um, and I don't know if I'm very clear if I know how to watch, you know, I'm super pumped up about it. We just got the boots yesterday, and I think, and the air, and the starting that fundraising, and the written things as well. And so it's going to be next, at the end of next month. Well, this is Michael T. I invite you to go to bookpartypodcast.com. Hit that subscribe tab on top and scroll down to the icon of your choice, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or Odyssey, where you can download and follow us there. Please leave a review. Don't forget to sign up to get our weekly video newsletter and get the information on our upcoming shows. Now, John, we're going to enter the lightning round. And what this means is there's four pointed questions for four pointed answers. So before you became an author, before you started writing, what was holding you back from becoming an author in the first place? Um, the new year was starting that I wasn't where I needed to be in my first act because I didn't know where the book should go. And, then, and as I said, it, 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 I wrote five chapters in 2013 and didn't finish it because I uh, started in 2013. Uh, and so, you know, that was, that was sadly down. You know, I didn't know where to put the book after that five chapters. Okay. Most people, you know, they have a fear of, do I have something to say that people are actually going to read? <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. Know. and then and and the first time I saw it at the bit, I I said that, you know, because I still, you know, other people have this time to them than I had, but then I showed that other people found them and that yeah, then you read a bit, and then I went, but then I said that that the two two first and then and I have this that right, I'm not gonna a bit. <laughs> well, there's an avatar for everyone, uh, and. You know, you're not writing for somebody else. You're writing for you and for your avatar. And there's an avatar for everyone. So you're just writing for yourself. Your competition is you, not anybody else. And you you just, that's the way you got to, you know, approach that. So once you started writing, what was the best advice that you had ever received? Um. And that's a question. Um, because I really, when I wrote, I it only took me three weeks to write it, so I really didn't scoop anybody during that time. Um, you know, it's kind of awkward, and I was very familiar with that idea, and, and just the advice that, you know, um, that, 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 that two chapter that I talked about, that I had in doubt, that I had the best thing in that experience. But my side of the doubt is writing the book, um, I pretty much, you know, by myself, and, and that really can't say anything about the book that I did about it. 
Well, I'll give you a couple pieces of advice. This is not coming from me. This is coming from a couple different authors, and I interview a lot of them. Let's say I can remember some things for the last hundred or so. But the two that stick with me the most is, number one, you cannot edit an empty page. You need to write. So the second one that kind of goes along with that is write drunk, edit sober. It has nothing to do with alcohol. It's just don't worry about sentence structure. Don't worry about (laughs) punctuation. Don't worry. Just get it out of your head and get it on there. Yeah. Don't worry about, oh, Grammarly's going to tell me to do this and tell me. You'll never get anywhere. Yeah. Just get it out of your head. Yeah. Then you can go back and fix things yeah. later and, on. And, and my thoughts are the show notes that I did do in that for the week. Because I just did it just a bump. I shot it to the computer and just... Just pound it out. Yeah, and just pound it out. And, and so the week later, I had 13 chapters of the book. So. Yeah, write drunk, edit sober. Just get it out and pound it down. So anyway, share one of your habits that contributes to your success. And I think it's my early morning prayer time in my, in my spiritual time reading the Bible. So that, uh, it's something that I talk to have every day. And it's something I do on a daily basis. It's something I do when I start my day. And so that would be, that would be the same thing. Okay. I thought you were going to go back to the Marine Corps that gave you a habit that gets you up at a certain time every day, and that's when you get up, make your cup of coffee, and start, start uh, doing your thing. Yeah. Okay. Can you share with our listeners an Internet resource that you use when you write? But just doing the first book and the content of the book, it was more uh, biblical research. It was being a bother. Um, and and that's probably the matter of an internet source that I used to, to my research and the theology of the, 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 the book. When you, when you got ready to write this book, did you do an outline first of the what you're going to write? I did an outline of the chapters that I read. Okay, good. Because I find it, you know, mine are nonfiction books, and I find it necessary, absolutely necessary, to do a solid outline and a solidly researched outline for the chapters, the subheadings. I mean, that takes longer than writing some of these chapters, but it has to be done because then some people say, oh, I got writer's block. You can't get writer's block. And the reason I'm saying that is... If you get stopped at a point, all you've got to do is skip ahead because you've got your outline, right? Skip ahead a little bit, start there, and start writing. And pretty soon, you'll be able to come back and fill in the blanks. So you don't just stop. And my thing, I first, in 2013, when I decided to write the book, I have to look for a book that because I thought, I'm not um, so I think I'm going to go to the other my church and see the only one of the churches really a staff and so I took them in and I sat down and she hopped down on the counter. Um, and then, you know, I go into the first part and then I sat on those notes and everything that I had until the time that I had to finish the book. So, you know, it was she hopped down on the So Right, okay. So, then I so John... I doing, then I started to have the book, so... <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to we're going to enter into the grand finale. Okay. So in the grand finale what I'd like you to do is to take your time and tell our listeners about your book. Uh, as I said, it, you know, it's, it's my next book um, and it's and it's has a lot of uh, you know the time and other things that I went through in the head of I I talked a bit about the end of, of my life and so um, because a lot of people uh, Shoot first of all, I was going to do kind of fish and that's going to be easier and that's not the first that actually becomes natural because of the shot of domination that we have to do to let them side the shot and shoot that we do that's not a line that, that's not a road and so that's a tough time and you know it's a better road is that if we walk through that better road is we get the forms and we get that we have to do it because it's not as easy as everybody thinks. Um, and so that's all in the book. You know, that's how they started to remember that and find out. Um, that, that's, you know, 
Okay, well, John, we thank you so much for being here with us today, for opening up to us, and I'm sure our listeners appreciate this too. John's book, Broken and Redeemed, is available on Amazon. Again, this is Michael T. To all our listeners, I would invite you to go to bookpartypodcast.com, hit that subscribe tab on top, scroll down to the icon of your choice, where you can find us on one of your favorite platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or Odyssey. You can download and follow us there. Please leave a review. Don't forget to sign up for our weekly video newsletter to get the latest information for our upcoming shows. Until next time, keep reading, learning, and discovering the world through the pages of a good book. Book Party Podcast is owned and powered by MTM Legacy Publishing, LLC. This is Michael T. signing off. You must not miss our next episode as we delve into a world of inspiration, entertainment, and thought-provoking insights. Join Michael T. on the next Book Party Podcast and experience a new adventure, a new story, and a complete immersion into the world of Pages Unveiled, Chronicles of the Writing Journey.